John Blake presents Slave Girl, written by Sarah Forsyth and read by Charlie Sanderson. Forward by Tim Tate, October 2008. On any given day, between 4,000 and 8,000 women are being forced to work, against their will, in the sex trade in Britain. They have been trafficked here, generally from Eastern Europe or Africa, and sold by international criminals into British brothels. Sex trafficking, transporting women and children across borders and forcing them into prostitution, is a 21st century form of slavery. A violent and callous trade run by organized crime gangs throughout the world. But the traffic is not all one way. British women are sometimes tricked into the sex trade in just the same way as women in less developed countries. They are trafficked to the red light districts of Amsterdam, Frankfurt and other European capitals. And they endure the same miserable and drug-ridden existence as those sold into sexual slavery in Britain. No British trafficked woman has ever come forward to describe her ordeal, until now. The story of how Sarah Forsyth was tricked, trafficked and imprisoned in Amsterdam's red light district is a dramatic and compelling insight into the closed world of international sex slavery. But the story of her life, abused first at home and then in care, and her long, difficult fight to survive, is also the very human tale of a vulnerable young woman and her desperate journey to safety. A journey that is only just ending. I met Sarah while I was making a documentary film for ITV in 2007. The film was a 90-minute special in which veteran investigative reporter Roger Cook revisited and updated many of his most famous campaigns of the previous 20 years. One of those was a disturbing investigation in 1997 into international sex trafficking. One section within the programme briefly told Sarah's story. She had escaped from her ordeal a few years earlier and had helped to put her trafficker behind bars. But even so, she remained trapped in her own personal hell and, as the film depicted all too plainly, in 1997, Sarah was a complete wreck. She sat slumped in a chair, her makeup smeared and smudged, and her eyes all but invisible, so far were they drawn back into her skull. And her speech betrayed the reality of her life then. She slurred her words. Viewers must have thought her either totally drunk or very heavily sedated. As it happened, it was the latter. Even so, what she had to say, what little she was able to enunciate about her ordeal in the shop window of the sex trade was harrowing in the extreme. As best she could, she outlined an existence, you couldn't call it a life, in which she was forced to have sex with up to 17 men a day, seven days a week. But she also described truly inhuman cruelty. After I'd finished work, I used to go to bed and sleep in a locked room, guarded by a bull mastiff dog, and then I'd get a shower and get ready for work again. Sometimes after I'd finished work, they used to play Russian roulette with me. The interview took place just two years after her ordeal, and the memories of what she had witnessed were still fresh in her mind. One of those memories was of witnessing the murder of another prostitute, apparently as part of an extreme pornographic video, and being warned by the men who controlled her that she too could face the same fate. He went, watch it if you don't win the money, he said. That's what will happen to you, he said. You are a 50,000 contract to me, and, he said, if you don't make that money, I'll put you in a movie like this and... He says, I can make a million off you. At the end of the interview, tears streaming down her ravaged face and with gulped pauses between her words, caused by emotion almost too powerful to watch. Sarah Forsyth somehow summoned all her strength to spell out, 
Sample complete. Ready to continue?